In part one of this series, we found multiple exhaust leaks while chasing a lean condition upon startup. We pulled the exhaust manifold and turbo assembly to inspect the gasket and sealing surfaces. And what we found was that the O2 housing and the exhaust manifold inlet flanges were not flat and possibly causing our exhaust leaks. You know we can't just do a simple gasket change. The flanges that had any distortion have been belt sanded flat and we have some new OEM gaskets that came in. The OEM part numbers are as follows. A 7 cm gasket is Mike Delta or MD171220. The O2 housing gasket is Mike Delta or MD185805. And the exhaust manifold inlet gasket is Mike Romeo or MR323654. Along with the newly flattened surfaces and the new gaskets, leaks in these areas should become a thing of the past. The turbine inlet and exhaust manifold inlet gaskets consist of multiple metal layers. The O2 housing gasket is one single layer of steel. Using a gasket, preferably the old one if you have it, you need to mark the section to be ported. Align the gasket using the bolts and the bolt holes and mark the sections that overlap. For porting, I am using this carbide bit to tackle the rough cut. You need to follow the markings in a manner so that this is a gradual slope into the opening. You want to avoid ledges and sudden angle changes that would cause turbulence in the path of the airflow. Once you reach the outer part of your marking, check your work against your gasket until they match. The same principle applies to the exhaust manifold inlet. Be sure to correctly align the gasket when making your marks. As you can see, pushing the gasket up will have you removing too much meat from the roof. Once marked, you want to try and achieve the same gradual sloped or beveled entrance into the opening. The idea of this port and polish job is to match the inlets and outlets of the exhaust parts to ensure optimal flow is achieved. Using a reference point such as the gasket allows us to keep a constant variable ensuring that the sizing of the separate ports will be close. I am not aiming to brush my teeth in the finish of this. I am only trying to remove the rough cast and casting marks. You could literally spend hours polishing things out. You may not realize it, but a majority of this video has been sped up to 64x for your viewing pleasure. With the rough cut complete, we moved the flap wheels in 120 and 240 grit for the final polishing. I aim to remove all of the casting marks and imperfections using the 120 grit and finish it up with a nice slick polish from the 240 grit. The turbine housing is up next for its treatment. Make sure to mark the matting point of the CHRA and the turbine housing so that you can properly clock the turbo upon installation. There was one bolt that fought hard not to come out, but it's nothing some patience and a little penetrating oil could not fix.
Now, since we had an issue with this hole and this hole, we will chase all the threads to ensure that we do not have any issues upon assembly. Make sure you use the proper thread pitch when chasing any threads because you do not want to cause any problems for yourself. Using a thread pitch gauge or running a die down a bolt can tell you what size the threads are if you are unsure. When matching the turbine inlet to the 7 cm gasket, it seems to almost be perfect. So all we need to do here is remove all the casting marks and rough surfaces leading to the volute and the wastegate entrance. The same 120 and 240 grit flap wheels were used to achieve a smooth finish here. With the wastegate polished, we try to match up the O2 gasket. What you will notice is the gasket is too small. It overhangs into the wastegate port. The old gasket was already modified to fit, so we will use it as a template to mark the new gasket and modify it. Once it's marked, we use grinding stones and sanding wheels to form it into the desired shape. The O2 housing has some ridges where the fabrication of this part took place. We will use the flat wheels here to smooth out the transition since cutting at the seams is not a bright idea. Now I apologize for the ending but my camera died. The O2 housing was polished out and you can see the results of the turbine and manifold here. All this hard work come together in part 3 so stay tubed.